Hello and welcome to AI Unlocked with Intelco Ultra Live. And this is a special episode. Today we're here at the Intelco Ultra Lounge, live at the CNE. And I'm talking to Casey Watson and Cole Solomon. Hi, people. Hi. Hi. Nice of you to join me today. Thanks for having us. Thank you, thank you. And Casey, I must compliment you. This is amazing. This thank is so you. beautiful. It's a showstopper. It gets everybody stopping and just wanting to engage with it. So thank you for letting us have it. Oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah. And I'd like to start, first of all, with talking to, learning a little bit about yourself and your work. So maybe we start with you, Casey? Sure. I'm a Toronto-based installation artist focused on making large-scale installations, it, mostly experiential, just the bigger, the better, just, you know, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Yeah. And you, Cole? I'm also Toronto-based. I've been in the creative technology industry for the better part of two decades. Um, specifically doing immersive experiences, exhibitions with my company's Ray of Stars and members. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you. I was so glad to have both of you. So tell us a little about how you both started working together. Well, we were actually partnered together for the last Intel Encore exhibit. Yes. Um, it was here in Toronto in the distillery district over at the Illuminarium. Um, and we were kind of partnered together to layer our skill sets to make a physical immersive installation that also has that digital AI layer. Um, so yeah, we were kind of put together to make this happen. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Cole. Yeah, well, I mean, Casey's piece here is, is really fun and physical. And so, you know, for me, figuring out how we can kind of keep that that feeling, that surprise and that, that enjoyment, you know, bringing technology, allow people to have a little bit of that conversation with it in a way they haven't before. Yeah, really interesting. So a partnership built on AI. That's nice, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so AI made you do it. Uh, can you walk us each through your creative process and how you start a project and how you put together installation? Sure. Um, for me, I always start a project with the viewer's experience in mind first. Mm -hmm. So layering different um, things together to touch all the senses. So tactile, in this case digital, sometimes there's lighting or scent and just to touch all of the senses to make it as immersive as possible. Um, yeah, so this is kind of what we've done here, but Cole can talk to the digital layer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I want I want to make experiences that people enjoy and they love, right? And that are surprising and interesting, not just about technology. So, yeah, figuring out what we want people to feel and like how we achieve that. I think that's the starting place. You know, technology is always a, a big piece of it. Yeah. And how did you find combining the two things that both of you bring to the table? I feel like it was a really natural. Um, an easy collaboration. Our skill sets uh, kind of are both after the same thing is to make a piece really speak to the viewer and just to layer our skill sets on top of each other to make a piece even more immersive. Um, yeah, it felt really natural to work together. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's this is a good example of something that we call bridge reality, right? Where mm -hmm. we're using something in the digital, something in the immersive, and something kind of in the in-between, like a spatial dimension, to bring something new to people, right? Um, I think this has been received so well. It's been so interesting to see people enjoying it. And I think it is part of that, right? Um, crosses a few different dimensions and gives some something unexpected to people. So, yeah. yeah, no, it's really rewarding. You know, you start with, on a project with the end in mind, and to see that what you're getting is exactly what you wanted it to be, that's just so amazing for anybody who's doing anything on any kind of project. So yeah. yes, kudos for that. Um, how essential is technology um, to part of the workflow? I would say it's essential. Um, I know I can speak for you know me as an installation artist, even though everything is very tactile and physical. The the first stages of an installation always start with concept renderings, mm -hmm. the digital files to create everything. Like everything starts on the laptop to be able to be brought to life. Um, 
Yeah, and then in this case, we have obviously that digital layer to add more of a conversation between the viewer and the piece. So yeah, it's it's so so important. <laughs> you know, it's so nice when you're able to have tools that help you skip the process of making the mistakes in the visualization process. Yeah. Because you can, this is what I have in my head. This is how it translates on the computer. Then you go and start, you know, doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool? For me, it's, it's a little bit of a different challenge, right? Technology, it needs to be stable. Mm -hmm. you know, when we have a big open public installation like this and you have thousands of people coming through potentially in a day, it needs to work and it needs we need to be confident in it, right? So um, specifically working with these Intel powered Samsung laptops, have been, it's been great. I mean, they've been running fantastic. So yeah, I mean, technology is crucial. Reliability. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. When you're investing in technology, you want to be confident that it's going to do what you want it to do and it's going to be there for the long haul. It's not just something that works today and doesn't work tomorrow, right? So what kind of AI functionalities um, have you tried out, you know, explored as you've done this work so far? This has been the first time integrating it into a physical installation, installation. which has been really exciting. Um, I mean, other than this, on the you know the back end, doing concept proposals with Mid Journey or Chat GPT and that kind of thing, um, has just like really streamlined processes that would have taken much longer, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this has been the first time integrating it into like a physical installation, which has been really great. Yeah, I've been really fortunate and I get to play with some of the coolest technology kind of every day. Um, I'm really interested in people's movement, you know, their, their poses, translating that, things like emotions into fun stuff to play with, you know, with physical activations. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty critical. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the uh, awesome developers that I get to work with every day too who uh, keep me smart. <laughs> Sounds good. And what kind of, what's your vision? You know, as an artist, you've done this for the first time now. I'm hoping you're gonna do it again. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So what's your vision for, for AI uh, for the future as you go ahead in, in doing new things? I feel like I've only really scratched the surface of what AI can even offer. Um, I mean, yeah, doing more installations with AI to uh, just add that extra layer of depth to the piece. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to keep working with it and see, you know, where it goes. I think for all artists, it's just like a, a tool that you can add to your toolkit mm -hmm. and really use it um, like you would anything else. It's just something to make your piece um, feel a little bit more layered and interactive. Are there any specific AI tools that you're using right now? AI tools, I feel like in this scenario, Cole can definitely speak to. But in your work in general? In my work, uh, I mean, just like Mid Journey or ChatGBT and okay. that kind of things just on the back end, but to have it be like a physical piece, Cole is definitely the mastermind behind <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the tools for this installation specifically, it's running in Touch Designer and it's using a MediaPipe plugin. Uh, which is awesome. There's so many different pieces of functionality that we can pull out. Um, even with this, you know, we had to really pull back what we wanted to explore to make sure it was simple. Yeah. 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 yeah simple because not everybody's at the same technology level. So you want something that people are able to interact with seamlessly without being techies, but enjoy the piece of art that they've come to experience. So what advice would you offer to other aspiring artists? Um, attendees of CNE who come and they see this and they're like, oh my goodness, I would want to create something like this. Um, and as well as people who are considering starting a career, whether as a creative technologist or as an installation artist like yourself, what's the advice you would give them? I got some advice years and years and years ago um, from an a art teacher actually that uh, said everybody has a thousand bad versions in them before they get to the good stuff. So it could be, you know, painting or drawing or installation, that kind of thing. So just if you're 
in it and you're not um, making things that you're, it looks different in your head than what you're trying to do <laughs> is just to learn from what you're doing and apply it to the next one and know that, you know, maybe you're at version 300, but you've, everyone's got a thousand, you know, versions before they get to the good stuff. And you call? Yeah. I think it's be curious, right? That's how you learn and play yeah. with these technologies if you're not interested in it. Um, thankfully, there's a fantastic community of creative technologists out there. You know, YouTube specifically is where the stream is, right? Thousands, tens of thousands of hours of some of the best people in the world offering files and, and ways for you to learn. Uh, the mm -hmm. touch <clears throat> pardon me, the touch center community is incredible. Uh, Toronto-based as well, which is fantastic. So yeah, I would say you know, just get into it, be interested. Right? I had a boss who said to me, fail forward. So. I think that's that's also very good advice. Like like your teacher told you, it's okay to make mistakes, make them, learn from them, but just keep going. Keep going. It's when we don't keep going that's when we do ourselves a disservice. But just to keep going and keep trying and keep learning. And as you said, YouTube, there's a plethora of resource out there in just watching what other people have done and learning from it and just taking that and imbibing it and using it to improve on the, what, what we've done. Yeah, exactly. It's so nice chatting with both of Thank you today. You. Thanks so much for joining us okay. on our first live episode, <laughs> right? Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate you joining us today. Really, <laughs> the, it's, it's really getting exciting in here in the hall. Thanks for joining us today on our first episode of AI Unlocked with Intel Car Ultra Live. Uh, Intel Core Ultra is available. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go to the nearest retailer and get your own Intel Core Ultra today. Thanks, everybody. Bye.